Hello and welcome to another episode of the Everything's Been Done podcast, conversations in cycling subculture. I'm your host, Dustin Klein, and today's episode is brought to you by the new Airflow Frame Decal Sheets. Yes, the Airflow Refraff Freaks are the best decal sheets you could ever imagine decorating your bicycle with. One sheet, one bike. We've got a complete alphabet and numbers one through zero, which includes nine, seven, six, all the, all the numbers. But just one, okay. Available at DustinKlein.com. Today's guest is a newly minted paramedic, a beacon of positivity, and he's got quite the story about one of those Chinese carbon road frames. Oh my. You can find him on Instagram, at Mark Marino. Please welcome Mr. Mark Marino. Oh my God. Mark, thank you for being here. Dustin, thank you for having me. Yes, it's It's a a pleasure. pleasure. Love hanging out with you. Love catching up. Yeah. Hey, congratulations on getting your recent um, paramedics license. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a long journey to make that happen. It was a grind. It was a grind. Um, Very thankful I was able to do it and was able to go to the school that I went to. And uh, it's quite a relief. I'll tell you, I was in some pretty dark places. Like through the process? Yeah, because it's like, it's... It, you know, like everything you do for school hinges on like one te- or two tests. And I was, you know, I was, you know, real talk. I was like struggling with one of those tests and I was like really questioning like my self-worth. <laughs> and so when I passed that test, I like, uh, I, I looked at the results and I like cried. I was just like so relieved. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But what a weird, like it, like the system, the structure is like kind of fucked up, right? Like, oh, if you can't answer these 50 questions correctly, like. You're out. It's yeah, kind of every, every medical tell you every medic or every nurse that's taken the same style of, it's like a, it's like a computer adaptive test. So it's like an online multiple choice and you just go sit in a cubicle and you can have anywhere from like 80 to like 150 questions or something. And there's, Oh, whoa. Yeah. So conventional wisdom says if you pass, if you, if the test cuts you off at like 80 to 90, you either aced it or you bombed it. <laughs> Cause you're just like, Oh, whoa. You, it's like, you got to stay above like the pass fail line. Interesting. Yeah. And any like, you know, nurse, medic, whatever. We'll, we'll talk to be like, Oh yeah, I messed that test up so bad. I feel like I failed. And then you find out you pass and you're like, Oh, okay. And yeah, they ask you like book questions and there's like, right. Book smarts and street smarts. And it's, you got to kind of like flip your brain kind of when you're going from internship, you know, doing street stuff to taking this test, to like doing book stuff. It's, it's a struggle. I struggled and I did it. So it feels pretty good. good. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of weird. Like a paramedic, of course, there's like a lot of like base information that's needed, but yes. it seems like the, the, the soul of that job is how you react in this insane situation. Exactly. It's not like, mm, yeah, well, a cardio van, it's a C6. It's not something, exactly. Yeah. That's, I couldn't agree more. It's like, it's, you obviously need the book smarts. You obviously need the, the knowledge and it's like start to finish. It's like including prerequisites for a medic program. It's like almost two years of school. Yeah. So you get like, um, usually, usually you can bang out paramedic school prerequisites in one semester. And then the program I went to is two semesters of like classroom stuff. And then you have like clinicals within hospitals and then you do like a field internship. And that could be, that could be, depending on how quickly you get done with your internship, it could be like close to two years. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, at this point, I'm fucking, you're dedicated. Like every day you're like, I'm locking more and more into this. Yeah. Every single day is like, yeah, I'm getting deeper and deeper. And it's just. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. Thank you though. Thank you for, yeah. It's, yeah, man. Dude, it's so sick. Yeah. And it's cool to just see your, from going, you know, this like track bike barista, like just kind of living life, man. <laughs> was, dude, was, like racing bikes and, and working just hard enough to make rent and buy food, you know? And I was just like, it was cool for my 20s, but now that I'm in my 30s, I'm like, I want some stuff. <laughs> yeah, or like you can only, sust- yeah, like that's an experience that's good to have for a portion of time at a and certain I, point I in your life. Yeah, I wouldn't trade my experiences or my opportunities for the world, I think all the places I've been because of you guys, because of, you know, like all my other sponsors, it's just like, you know, like whether it's, you know, like Cadence or Andrew Lowe or, you know, personal stuff. It's just like, it's, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So that's actually, that's, it leads to this question. What 
right now, what are you most grateful for in your life? Can you, cause you are a very grateful person, which I love the hell out of that. Oh, thanks man. Cause it's, it's not that common, mm -hmm. but it's, it maybe is a tricky question because I feel like you're grateful for everything. Yeah. Without, I mean, yeah, without like beating it over that. I mean, it's, it's hard to say because I've, I feel like I've led two two different lives up until, you know, it was like, move to, move to San Francisco, start working in coffee, you know, racing bikes, meeting all these people, doing all this traveling. And then I just like hard stopped it and went back to school. Right. And like, like I was saying earlier, like I'm like, I went, I was able to go to um, the San Francisco city college paramedic program, which yeah. for me was awesome. Like that was like the the best best one I could have gone to. And I'm like so happy I was able to get into that and finish that. But before that, you know, I did all this rad stuff on bikes and I could yeah. I'm just like I it's like it's hard looking back on and like picking a moment because there's been like so many. No, but what about right now? What are you most grateful for? Right now I am most grateful. Wow. I'm most grateful for my situation, I guess, like doing, yeah, like I'm, I'm able to live in San Francisco, do the work that I do, afford a living. And I still, I still ride. I still do other stuff, just not as to the capacity that I used to. So I'm, yeah, I'm grateful. I can still ride bikes. There you totally. go. Totally. Yeah. 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 Grateful I can still ride. Actually that leads, this is like kind of interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, question also is if you were to live to the age of 90, Mm -hmm. and retain the mind or the body of a 30 year old okay. for the last for the last 60 years of your life which would you choose so one of them's going to deteriorate but the other one yeah. won't uh, which is a ooh, that's question. a really good question i would <sighs> mind maybe i think i would want to keep the mind oh yeah you could buy by cycling, maybe, maybe, maybe not actually. Maybe, if if I could walk around the block without a walker when I'm ninety, I'd be psyched. Which is seems uh, very <laughs> likely because Reasonable. you're so active. <laughs> yeah. As long as you just don't stop, that's the thing I've learned is just keep yeah. doing the thing. You want that like mental acuity to like be able to keep just doing stuff. Maybe the yeah. body can't keep up, but you still have your brain. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Makes sense. Yeah, oh, that's a good perspective. I was thinking it would be <laughs> uh, like trapped in like a, a flesh prison. You're like, my mind is sharp, but my body is like, can't keep Aren't up. Aren't we all trapped in flesh prisons anyway? <laughs> <laughs> One Ain't or another. Ain't it the truth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty uh. funny. Okay. Um, hey, do you ever see – this is sort of a dark question. Do you ever see uh, cyclists – like as cl clients, clients. Pa patients, customers, patients, yeah, patients, um, customers, <laughs> unwilling they're customers. <laughs> they're not customers. I actually told, I told a good friend of mine that I used to race with. He was, he, he, he was texting me the, uh, like a week or two ago. And he was like, yeah, I saw one of the ambulances, you know, as I was like riding on, you know, one of the roads in the County that I work on, he was like, I wanted to see if it was you. And I was like, it might've been, but don't you ever fucking visit me at work? Yeah. Dude. As in like, don't get, you know, right. Right. Anxious. Um, yes, I was, oh. yeah, have responded to quite a few like auto, auto versus cyclist happens a lot. Um, is it? Whoa. And it's like, it's, you know, it, it's nasty. Like the ones I haven't personally been on like really horrible ones, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it, it happens quite a lot. Yeah. It, it's scary just because of like how heavy a car is and how exposed a cyclist oh. is. It's like, you can't. Dude, Deny. nothing. Yeah, it's like butter through a hot knife or whatever. Just like beep. <laughs> Wait, hot knife through butter? Yeah, or whatever. I don't know. Like, <laughs> you can you, anyone can fill in the, the an analogy that makes sense right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, do some of them get pretty nasty? Like pretty messy? I suppose so. Yeah, it, like, it's, sc it's scary. <laughs> like, what I, I got? I mean, this this year started. I I got hit by a car on like January 2nd or 3rd or something. Oh shit, you and started it, off the year proper. I started off the year off real good. And, and I was super sad because the guy wasn't insured and it, it totaled oh. that um, pursuit frame that, I, that Andrew gave me. It was the first bike he ever gave me, which was like, that was the one that I rode to Las Vegas and like just did all these alley cats on. Yeah. 
I still got it. I still got it here, but cool. RIP. Um, but it, it's scary because it's like the adrenaline kicks in, you know, it's like you get knocked off your bike, you stand up right away and then you don't really, it like hides injuries or hides pain. And then like an hour later, you're just like, whoa, shit, you've got like a fat black eye, your back hurts. And you're just like, oh. And it's hard, yeah. like, people are like, let me call you an ambulance, let me call you an ambulance. Like, no, 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 don't call me an ambulance, because I don't want to get in it. But That's really funny, because you actually know, like, everything that they would do. Honestly, it happened to me in the city, and the chances of one of my either classmates or friends showing up and being, like, annoyed at me for getting hit by a car would be really <laughs> They're like, oh, it's fucking Mark. <laughs> this they they throw the go. At me. They're like, they, you know how this program works. Just just fill this out. Do the, do the paperwork. <laughs> they give you the paperwork. You're like, oh, my <laughs> arm. That's pretty funny. Wait, uh, tell tell us about the uh, that ride you guys did to Las Vegas. That's one for the books uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that was something else. Um, so it was me. Chad, what year was this too? What's that? What year was it? I think it was 2012, maybe maybe. Yeah, 2013. that sounds right. Totally. Um, <clears throat> I had ridden to LA a few times already, um, once by myself and once with two friends from New York, Josh and Austin. And so I can't remember, I can't remember how it came up. I think Chaz might have brought it up because our friend Chris, also from New York, was in town, and it was like a, a you know series of events. There was like bicycle film festival in Los Angeles, and then oh, Interbike cool. that following weekend. So. We, it's just like one of those things that's like working in part-time in a coffee shop. Like you could afford to take these trips because you had like weird hours or you could just cool enough time in advance. You can find someone to work for you. So we <laughs> took like, uh, I think like the ride itself took six days. So it was four days from here to LA and then two days from LA to Las Vegas. What kind of bikes? Track bikes. So I, d I did it on that pursuit frame that I got hit on. <laughs> A brakeless pursuit a track brakeless bike. A brakeless pursuit track bike. I had oh, drop bars. Um, and I was ahead of the curve. I had 25C tires on. Did, were they kind of like, why you got these fat tires? Yeah, <laughs> these seem so big. I think Chaz had like a 25C rando on the rear or something. You know, we were, it was yeah. just, So we did the ride. It was like, you know, down the coast. It was in like September, so it was pretty warm. Um, we left SF. We did like San Francisco to like moro bay which is like just outside of monterey and then we did monterey ish area to um san luis obispo i think some kids like knew we were doing the trip and like let us stay in their apartment like that That's night sick. and then we You're did like the band on tour you guys like, you can stay at my spot pretty much yeah this was like before <laughs> i chas had instagram so this was before i had instagram this was like before strava and all that shit and he sorted that out. He's like, hey, I got us a place to stay in slow. And I was like, all right, cool. Awesome. Let's do it. But yeah, just backpacks, no like tents or camping gear or anything. Um, Back, backpacks too. Yeah. I had a tiny little like, oh no, actually I actually had an Ortlia, those like roll top Ortlia bags. Yep. It was actually like worked out perfectly. But, um, <laughs> and then, so yeah, f slow and then slow to Santa Barbara and then Santa Barbara to LA. <laughs> And then we stayed in LA for a few days, did the bicycle film festival thing. And then we rode from Los Angeles to Baker or Barstow. I always mix the two up, whichever one's like equidistant. And then the next day was that city to Las Vegas, but it was super warm the whole time. So we had like some winter gear with us. We had like jackets and like sweaters and base layers <clears throat> that kind of weighed us down. So we got to LA we're like, man, it's super warm let's send this stuff back so we can have like light bags for the last two days of our trip where we're going to do 300 plus miles in two days. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. So we mail this stuff back. We hit the road. It's hot as hell. We're like kind of psyched. We have like lighter backpacks, more room for water. We get to bake. I think it's, I think it's bake. No, I think it's Barstow. And so we shack up, we look at the weather. We're like, all right, let's chill out. Let's like kind of let the afternoon sun do its thing. So we left, we left that town, we left that city at like noonish, maybe like high noon, one o'clock thinking it was going to like help us out down the road. But then we just didn't realize that we were climbing up Baker grade, which is like five or 6,000 feet oh. high desert in September. We have no gear. We sent back all of our jackets, all of our base layers and we're freezing. It's like 40 degrees out. It's September and like in the desert. <laughs> and so I remember, I remember we're like, we stop at this truck stop and we get like 
you know, vending machine coffees, just like, just to keep our hands warm. <laughs> and we're just, it's pitch black. And like, we're getting flat tires left and right. Cause like all, oh yeah, flat tires. So we had a bunch of flat tires. The only bike shop we could find in Barstow was like a BMX shop. So they only had like 26 inch or 24 inch tubes, which you couldn't even stretch. Like with like Schrader valves, you like, there's no way they would work. So we just bought like, we bought like pretty much like bought all their patch kits. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and and so we start this grind out to and we like get to the top of baker grade and we're just like dude guys we fucked up <laughs> we have like little blinky nog lights we don't even have like real lights is it dark at this point it's pitch black <laughs> it's oh like, my god there's In the a, <laughs> there's like a, there's a really great photo of me and Chris like cyclocross carrying our bikes like on the side of the highway and like the only light is like the flash from the camera. <laughs> just and by moonlight, like so we're just, that's the North Star. <laughs> so we're like stopping and fixing flats every thirty minutes. Oh my god! And we finally get to the top and we can like kind of see the lights of Las Vegas in the distance. We're like, guys, we fucking did it. But we still probably had like 20, yeah. <laughs> we, probably, we probably still had like 20 or 30 miles. And uh, we just fucking sent it. Like we just descended Baker grade and Chris had two flats, but we like patched them up and got like 40 or 50 PSI in his tires. I had a rear flat. Chaz had like a slow leak in his front or something. That just the three of us just like rolled into town completely shelled we stopped at another gas station to get trash bags because it started raining oh my god sent all of our gear back in la <laughs> oh my god. so we're like riding in with these like trash bag ponchos and we sh we show up to a hotel where like a bunch of people are staying <laughs> a bunch of people are staying it's like it's probably like five or six o'clock in the morning when we get into las vegas oh my god and we were staying at i can't remember which hotel it was but like a bunch of other San Francisco, Oakland people were staying there. And um, we get there, it's like five or six in the morning. We're like, you know, cracking open some beers, just kind of just like taking in what we just did, how intense that last, you know, 10 hours was. And so, and then we hear this like, you know, knock on the door and it was security because they had been partying like that whole day Dude. and like, smoking weed and like you know it's like so like obviously people staying in and around them like probably had called the security on them we got kicked out it's like 7 a.m oh we're, we're just like absolutely shelled and oh what a feeling you're like we made it we and made then it. you guys are like you guys have to leave and you're like fuck <laughs> Oh my I was lucky. God. I, I was waiting. I was, Andrew Lowe was coming in the night after we got there. So he was kind enough to let me shack up with him. So I just had to wait a few hours for him to get there. That's sick. <laughs> but like, oh my like God. Five or six other people that were like, shit out of luck. Dude, what an experience. Oh, man, that was something else. That was one uh, of those things where it's like one of, that's like one of those things where you like, I see pictures of it. I'm just like, God, I can't believe I fucking. Yeah, and you're like, I don't want to do that again. Yeah, not again. <laughs> I don't have anything to prove anymore. <laughs> I need to ride a fucking pursuit bike to Las Vegas. <laughs> Dude, that is so intense. Ooh. Random story, like, random tangent though. A couple of years ago, I bought a, um, I bought like a Sugino chain ring off eBay, just randomly. I was like, I don't have a 47 tooth chain ring. I'm going to get a 47 tooth chain ring. And then I searched Sick. on eBay. The first one popped up. It was like a super sick Zen. Kid sends it to me. And I open the package and there's a note in it. And it's like, dude, when you, Chaz and Chris rode to Las Vegas, that is the reason why I ride bikes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I still, it's like downstairs, like with all my bike stuff. Like I still have it. Whoa. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, he was like, keep on doing you, man. Like that was such a huge inspiration. I was just like, dude, out of a random eBay package, like this is so sick. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah, the kid was like, Mark Marino, San Francisco. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was so awesome. It was, like, such a cool note. It was, like, on my refrigerator for the longest time. Then I moved, and now it's just, like, you know, ticked, you know, tacked onto the wall near my bike stuff. But it's just, like, dude, stuff like that is just, like, so cool. Yeah, it's kind of – it's cool to see how, like, what you do, the wake of it can affect other yeah, people. Absolutely. We're, like, so inside of ourselves that – it's hard to like even know that that happens. 
until right. someone people, like reaches out and they're like, dude, that thing you did was so inspiring. Yeah. Or like, like people see you guys, you know, bike messengers working on the streets. You're like, these guys look cool. Like, I want to do what they're doing. Like, they look like they know what they're doing. They're like gritty and like, you know, this and that. And it's like, you don't realize that you're just like going about your business. Like you're just, you're, you're doing you. Meanwhile, right. someone's like, I'm going to buy a bike because that guy looks cool. Yeah. 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 In, especially in San Francisco, it's so like, and New York, like, so just mixed in just the culture of life on the street. You know, you're just, like, in the mix with, like, everything, which is so cool. Yeah. Okay, what about uh, Chinese carbon frames? Mm. Too soon. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I had a pretty... No, I had... Um, I, had the, I, had the, I had a pretty nasty crash on one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, like, tell us that experience. So, you, you needed a road bike, I'm guessing. I needed a road bike. I can't remember what happened to the... I think I crashed... I think I had like a specialized or something that Garrett gave me before oh. that, that I crashed in a crit and I like oh, cracked, I the, uh, cracked the chain, drive side chain stay. And so I was like, well, on to the next one. But I, like I needed a bike quick and I heard through the wire that like you could buy basically like unbranded Trex or Giants off eBay. And this one didn't come with a love note. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like also super affordable. I feel like yeah, everyone's like, kind of seen these bikes like and everyone's work, it was like three fifty shipped. Right. And everyone's really curious, like what like it's that's the price point where you're like, why is this so cheap? Exactly. And it's like I just I might have just gotten a bad egg, but I remember I rode it probably for about two months. Not particularly oh. hard. I only raced it a few times. I never like crashed it or put it down. Um but I was like, I'm just like a regular old like weekday training ride with. But wait, did that bike feel weird at all, or did it feel good? Like, I don't remember. Um, I don't. Nothing remember. stood out though. You weren't like, Nothing oh, it's really st- soft or really loose or anything. Yeah, totally. I rode it and I was like, this bike is ride. This is a rideable bike. Like this. Is- so you were stoked. Yeah, I was like, dude, man, I think I just cheated the system somehow. Like, yeah, I right. Like, I got a you know twelve hundred dollar Trek for three hundred dollars. Right. Just because it doesn't say Trek on the down tube. But, Which you would have okay. taken off anyways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, this is the awesome. So, I remember, like, it was just, like, a, whatever, like, a normal, tra- like, weekday training ride with um, my friend Zach and Gabe Morford. Him and I, oh, like, cool. ride a lot together, too. We would just do, like, easy, like, headlands loops or whatever, like, weekday mornings. I miss Gabe, man. I don't know if you've, like, talked to him or stay in touch, but I think he, like, he moved to L.A., but. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Cool. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Gabe was really rad. Um, so we we're like riding one day and we're like on the side of a bike path. And then next thing I like, literally I'm just like, I'm like, I, like riding down this like little incline. And the next thing I know, I like wake up in an ambulance. Whoa. Yeah. And then, um, I'm like kind of looking around I'm like, what the hell? And Whoa. one of the medics was like, dude, you, you were out, man. And I was like, what, what happened? He was like, yo, man, your bike exploded. And I was like, what do you mean my bike exploded? <laughs> and then we get to the, it's like, you can't, I can't see it because it's like behind me. So like the way you are in an ambulance, your feet are facing the back door. Right. And there's, there's a seat behind you with like a bench right here. And usually there's like a little bit of space that we have if we like need to put a patient's belongings with us. So like bikes or luggages or, or whatever. Oh, so I, I, have, I have totally been, like, thought, I totally thought they just, I feel like every story I've heard is they just like leave the bike in the middle of the road and rush you off. And you're like, what the fuck? Case by case. If that's the, if that's the case, usually like PD or fire will take any belongings and like hold them at their respective stations. And you can like connect down the road to pick your stuff up. But okay. You, we always try to take personal property because there's, okay. You know, they got, there's, they have a life after the hospital. They need to get home. Even if the bike's split in half, like mine was, they still need to like get home. Yeah. So I wake up, one of the medics is like, dude, your bike exploded. And I was like, what do you mean my bike exploded? And I can't turn because I have one of those like collars on. And um, oh, you're like, it's right there. You're fine. Yeah, I can't see it. right behind you. And I was like, oh, I can't see it. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> And then I kind of like, you know, come in and out of memory for a little bit. And then I remember I had to work that afternoon. And then I'm like sitting in Marin General in like Corte Madera, whatever city it's in. And I remember giving my phone to a nurse and she was like, I was like, hey, what's the story? Like, what's going on? She was like, well, you were in a pretty bad wreck. It looks like you might have gotten a concussion. 
you definitely weren't unconscious per what the medic said. I was like, I have to be at work at three. Like, how's that going to look? And she was like, yeah, you're not going to work today, probably tomorrow too. And I was like, oh, fuck. So she was like, can I call your employer? And I'm like, yeah. So I gave her my phone. Oh, I was working cool. at Ritual. And she like just dials him up. And I remember her being like, yeah, hi, this is so-and-so at Marin County General Hospital. Uh, Mark Perfect. Will be coming into work today or tomorrow. And they were like, what? Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> and then so my You're dad. You're like, tell them I should get paid too. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So my dad came and picked me up and then I went home with him for like a couple of nights and I was like on, you know, concussion watch. He'd like wake me up every couple of hours at home. Whoa. And so I took the bike apart, threw away half the frame. And then I had, I think I might even still have like the head tube, but I remember giving when Travis had fresh air, I remember bringing the head tube to Travis and giving it to him and being like, make sure people don't buy these bikes. And he like put it up on the wall and he was like, don't buy these no name bikes. <laughs> and Wait, then, what happened to the bike? Oh, the, um, it split right at the, like, so here's the head tube. It split at the top tube and the down tube. So the head tube with like two little things like right here. So it just like, sh just like clean cut. It looks like someone just like cut it. Holy. So it just like, not telescoped. Um, yeah, it just split. Like just split. And I was riding it and I probably just went oh like, my so I think that's where I got like, you can't really see it, but I think that's where I got that one. Wow. So, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude that i i think that story is i mean i'm so stoked that you didn't get you did get hurt but i did get hurt yeah get that, even more hurt i didn't get worse yeah because that is like yeah i feel like you don't hear that often like how treacherous those bikes are and i think this story is so valuable for people like mm -hmm. if it seems like too good of a deal it probably is yes <laughs> And your life may depend on it. Yeah. Luckily, I was like, I think this, I think I was like 25, maybe. So I was like still on my parents' health insurance. And oh, sick. I kind of just went somewhere. And then you weren't alone. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Oh, my. Oh, my. God. Like, if Zach and Gabe weren't there, who knows? Like, who knows? Just laying there and someone like comes upon this guy with a wheel over there and a frame over here. You're like, <laughs> like what? Nah, in the, on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> be like you sure did take a weird time to take a nap yeah i'm laughing at it now but back then it was fucking <sighs> scary <laughs> dude that is so heavy yeah yeah pretty well that's definitely i think even more so than when i broke my i broke my collarbone but even more so than i think that was like my worst crash because i think like losing consciousness and like getting concussed and stuff is like it's dangerous would not recommend it yeah no don't make a hobby out of doing that mm -hmm. <laughs> or like i mean some hobbies that's a, a very a fairly common byproduct yes like riding bikes or any well i mean maybe not so much road bikes you don't get knocked out that often no but maybe bmx mm, yeah or down downhill down, yeah mountain biking for sure but <laughs> whoa dude <laughs> Um, that, that's kind of a, what do you feel like you have a hunch on how you will die? And it's again, another dark question, but it kind I of like ties into that. <laughs> My eyes just went like, Ugh. You're like Ugh. I don't know how I'm going to, I, I, I don't think, I don't know. People are like, are you, you know, like the, are you scared of death question? I think it's like kind of a, mm. like a, I think it's like a silly thing to be scared of. Is that, totally. you know, maybe that's just like my own like pessimism or outlook on mora mortality, mortality. Yeah mortality um i don't know how when don't have a preferred way yeah. oh preferred way that's easy in bed sleeping in bed, under the covers just transition into the transition next dimension the next life yeah next dimension yeah that's what i want do <laughs> um yeah but that's one thing i've talked to you about this before i i feel like is through your job you have such a close relationship with death that yes. uh a lot of like Western culture, death is so hidden from us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of like a, it's so, I, I almost see it as like a, a bonus to what you do. Of course it's dark, it's grim, it's sad, yeah. but to have a, a connection to that, I think there's, I think that's a special thing because it, it maybe, does it kind of like make it less intense or less, 
I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but it, it changes your relationship. Yeah, I guess I would wonder if it makes it less scary. Yeah, it makes me, it makes me realize like how fragile life is. You know, even if even if you like fade away in bed when you're 90 <clears throat> versus having a heart attack when you're 40 or dying in a car accident, you know, it's like we're all very, very fragile. <clears throat> and I think also too, like seeing like, you know, late state, like the disease processes, like late stage makes it, makes you, you know, people, people are like, don't eat sugar, you'll get diabetes. Well, everyone's like, well, sugar is really good. I like eating sugar. And then 30 years down the road, they're like, oh, I shouldn't have eaten all that sugar. But like seeing it, seeing long-term effects of stuff like that, for me personally, makes it more real. You're like, this is what happens when you don't do certain, or you do too much of something or don't do certain things, you know? Oh. And it's like, so for me, I try to stay proactive. Like I quit drinking. I try not to eat too many sweets, but I like stay, I try to stay active to like just prolong, you know, cause you're, you know, it's like, it's corny to say, but it's like your body is a temple, you know, it's like you only get one of them and you really yeah. treat it how you would want to be treated. Yeah. I like what you're saying that you're faced with like, you can see these things of like, Oh, someone who's drinking or an, be an alcoholic their whole life or like eaten poorly or never yeah. exercised you can see this result <laughs> see you're it. like and it's like it, it, you know obviously like it's, it's our duty to empathize like we <clears throat> you know no judgment we're there to help you somebody you or somebody called 911 because they want us there so it's our job to do what we need to do to help you and we're never going to judge and you know <clears throat> for me yeah like empathy is like so important and so vital <clears throat> and you just try to, you know, do what you can to like help people. But yeah, being immersed in it <clears throat> definitely like, definitely makes it like very real. Yeah, so. that's cool. If you had a crystal ball to tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future or anything else, what would you want to know? Oh, um, I don't. I don't know if I'd want to know anything. Cool. Does that make sense? Because yeah, like, what's for the? Sure. It's like, have you ever, <laughs> have you ever seen or have you ever seen or read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No, I haven't. There's a joke where they make this like massive computer in this like super smart alien race. They're like, what's the meaning of life? What? What's? Why are we here? What's the point? What's everything do? And the computer, spoiler alert, spits out the answer forty two. And they're like, what does that mean? Why would? What is forty two? What forty two? What? What is? What, that's the forty two is the meaning of life. You're like. What if, like, what if you ask a question and you don't get the answer you want? That's no, that what you just said there is powerful in real life. Yeah. Don't ask questions. You don't want to hear the answer to if you don't want to hear an answer you don't want to hear. Exactly. Or, and, and I'm not trying to like blur the line between something like that or ignorance is bliss. Cause it's like, that's a, <laughs> that's telling a pretty thin line, but it's like, yeah, man. It's like, I don't, you know, the future is unwritten. Right, right. So what's the point of knowing it before? And then there's like the weird inherent thing. Like, well, if you know it, then it's like. Then what's the point of living it if you know the outcome? Well, you might not know when it's going to happen. True, true. It just, I mean, there's movies like that. Like, you're, oh, well, in Minority Report, great example. Like, you're going to kill this person. Oh, yeah. He does everything he can to not do that. And then he does it, I think. Yeah. Or, I they're, they're arresting people that haven't committed a crime yet, but they're minutes away from it or something. Yeah. Like this whole ethical thing. Which is a cool concept. Yeah. Uh, is there something you've dreamed of doing for, for a long time or for your life that you haven't done yet? Or that you haven't done? <clears throat> mm. I would really like to go skydiving. <laughs> oh, for real? You're one of those. I think it's just one of those things where it's like, I just think it's like so cool. <laughs> I'll probably <laughs> never do it, to be honest. Like, <laughs> why not? I don't know. It just sounds cool. Like, yeah, that sounds, that's it. That would be pretty sick. <laughs> that seems, that's a good one. And cause that's also very doable. It is. Yeah. It's not so crazy that it's like impossible, but it's like so wild jumping out of a plane at what do they do? Like 10,000 feet or something. That's a great question. I don't know what the elevate elevation such a we have such a different relationship to it because of like riding bikes. Like, oh, I rode ten thousand feet this weekend. 
you rode to where you, people jump out of airplanes. Yeah, but, well, not really. We did, you know, yeah, we did. The, right, 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 right. Yeah. That. <laughs> but accumulatively, you know, it's like. Cumul- yeah. Huh. Yeah, my mom did sky, she sky dove, sky dived, like, later in life. She was, like, in her 50s or something. I feel like that's just, like, that's, like, a midlife crisis thing for some people. They just need to feel like they're still, they can still do something that's extremely uncomfortable or unnatural. Oh, but you don't have to jump out. I just have a like a conversation with someone that can be extremely difficult and uncomfortable. It absolutely. Can. <laughs> Ask yourself the right questions. Same category. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to eat sugar. There's another one. Fuck. No, fuck the that. list goes on. <laughs> it's so simple, but so hard. <laughs> true. 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 Uh, what's your most treasured memory? Oh man. The most treasured memory. Um, hmm. I remember. I remember when I decided to move to California. It was just like so casually in a text message thread with my dad. Cause, cause he, <laughs> yeah, why not? Because sure. he had, he had moved out here already for work, and so um, I definitely wasn't like college bound. You know, I definitely wasn't like applying to colleges when I was you know senior year in my high school. And um, he just threw it out there. He's like, hey, dude, if you want to come to California, you know, me and your little brother and your, you know, stepmom are out here. Community college is way cheaper. And I was like, oh, cool. Why not? Like, fuck it, you know? It's like having a family out here already sure makes landing a lot easier. Massively easier. So I moved out here when I was 18. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll try it out for a few years, see what happens. And then I just never went back. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still here. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. That's 16 really- years later, still here. <laughs> that's cool that's a but perfect yeah i remember that like i remember texting my dad and just like i think i was like in lunch period lunch period one day and one of like the last like maybe the last month or two of my senior year and i was just like i'm gonna move to california fuck yeah <laughs> totally oh so like yeah i yeah. did the graduation thing stayed out there for the summer said goodbye and left in september cool you're like the weather's getting bad I'm going to go to summer. Dude, I do not miss the winters. That is for that is for sure. But I do miss the thunderstorms. Those were cool. Yeah, those are cool. The thunderstorms and like the Italian food. The Italian food out here is just isn't the same. But and the seasons. Seasons are awesome. They're cool. I liked fall. Fall was really nice. But, you know. Stop. Buck stops fall. It's a give and, it's a give and take. Yeah. Hey, you, you got any good bonking stories? Oh, dude. I just went on a big ride like two or three weekends ago with uh, Fergus and our friend Jeremy. And this another, another I think his name was Justin. I just met him like that morning. <laughs> it, dude, it was a bad look, man. I bonked so hard on that ride. Oh, really? Yeah, this was only like a few weeks ago. And I'm definitely like bonked hard, <laughs> but this one's like really fresh. I think Fergus is like still mad at me for <laughs> he's like you should be you should know better by now <laughs> we we left to do um tinnitus like a tinnitus creek loop which from san francisco no matter which way you slice it it's anywhere from like 80 to 95 miles if you do like you can do you know down to pacifica and then you can do like this dirt road called um planet of the apes which is like the old old highway one it's like overgrown and stuff. So we did that. We did that cut back down to highway one, did some neighborhood stuff. And then we did a couple of climbs that the tour of California did, I think through in like 2009 or 2010 or something like, you know, all these extra side roads. And then we did Tanitas Creek, which is like a pretty gnarly climb, just like a lot, really beautiful. <laughs> Gotta be one of the best climbs in Northern California that I've ridden. <clears throat> and um, it's just like switchbacks with like redwoods and it's just like really pretty. And you hit that climb maybe a little bit before halfway. And I remember like being at the bottom of that climb and I was just like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I get to the top of the climb. They'd probably been waiting for like six or seven minutes. And it's just downhill from the, for the rest of the day, figuratively and literally. Like, so you get to the top of Team Creek and then you descend Kings Mountain into Woodside, which is like one of my favorite descents. <laughs> But I was just like, 
I was like, man, I know I'm in a bad, bad shape if I'm like riding the brakes down a descent and you're just, I'm just like tired. My back hurts. My hands hurt from braking. And I'm like, I know I could be riding this faster, but I'm just like too gorked out. And we get to like uh, a grocery store in Woodside. I have like chips and some fruit and oh, cool. not enough food. <laughs> and oh, it's man. just from, and from that, from that market, it's just like a grind back to the city for like probably like 30, 35 miles. And we started a little bit late in the day. So by the time we got to the back up to highway 35, like the wind and the fog was rolling in and it was just, I was like, oh man, <laughs> that was a bad one. Dude, it starts dude, getting cold. You're just yeah, like, dude, that this. fog, man, it, it doesn't get cold out here. Like it does on the East coast, but for some reason, the humidity out here just makes it like so much more like bone chilling. Like it just like cuts right through you. And yeah. grinding home into a headwind with fog was just a nightmare. And I just, I died. Like I finished the ride and it was like from, from my house, it was like 97.8 miles or something. I was like too tired to ride around the block a couple of times. Oh, and yeah. got up to hundred. I just wanted to get, get home. <laughs> did, did those guys have to wait up for you a bunch or was Yeah, there... I told them, I was like, guys, just ditch me. Like I can get home from here. It would actually make me feel better if you left me. And then for right. being, being the homie that he is, he's like, dude, we start a ride together, we finish a ride together. Oh, he stayed with you. Everybody did, Justin and Jeremy. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm very surprised. Yeah. I had a different experience with him in uh, another country. Interesting. Oh, yeah. So, for yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've ridden with him and, and every every single time he's usually – He's usually pulling, pulling me. <laughs> oh, he's always pulling for sure. He's yeah. so strong. But so yeah, he it was me and these the studio, and that was like the most recent like big time bonk. But I remember like the first day on one of like the LA trips that I did, I like got like really bad cramps on the first day. I was like, "Ooh, it's too early for cramps like these." <laughs> so, but stuff like that, you just eat some beef jerky, drink a bunch of water, and you know, ride through it. <laughs> Give it a good couple slaps of dirt. Put some, yeah, and you're. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's better than nothing. <laughs> hey, what if anything is too serious to be joked about? Is there anything that's too serious to be joked about? Mm, in context to bikes, my work, or in this experience of reality? Oh man, I feel like that's. There's so many things that are too serious to be joked about. Oh really? You are not a comedian then. No. I don't know. Try to be, try to be PC. I think <laughs> <laughs> this guy's been living in San Francisco for too long. <laughs> okay. What about this one? If you were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone, what would you most regret not having told somebody? Whoa. Yeah. That's a pretty big one. Actually. Big one, yeah. You're like, next question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That would be, yeah, I don't know, man. I guess, <laughs> like, ugh. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to answer anything. Uh, there was one that I thought would be good. Well, maybe it was that one. <laughs> the one that I wouldn't answer. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that was one of them in here too. Is like if you're gonna, if you knew you were gonna die in a year, what would you change about what you're doing now? I think Ooh. that's what it was. I wouldn't change anything, honestly. Yeah, I kind of felt like that's what you were gonna say too. Yeah, I'm starting. I'm like, I'm on the ver. I'm like a week away from starting a new journey in my career, and just keep doing what I'm doing. That was good. Thanks for hanging out yeah dude this is so awesome man this is like really really great i'm like enjoying i've been enjoying watching these especially now being part of it so tell all your friends <laughs> oh i will i already have like a good idea for a caption for when you send me the link <laughs> you're like hey mom look at my interview <laughs> you're like i told my mom like, oh. oh she'll i'll post it she will definitely watch she'll forward it to like everybody in my family <laughs> You'll get like 100 views just from the Marinos. Thank you to Mr. Mark Marino. You can find him on Instagram at Mark Marino. And thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. Don't forget, new Airflow sticker sheets for the frames for the bicycle decoration. One sheet, one frame. We've got all the graphical goodness. You can find those at DustinKlein.com shop. I appreciate you. 
I'll see you soon. We'll be here same time next week. Avita Zane.